you back to the next session of uh, embedded software testing uh, unit 2 series where we study about the testing methods. Today's session uh, <coughs> we will uh, touch on uh, the model based uh, testing and its technique and the details. Uh, before that uh, we will uh, uh, in the last session uh, we had gone through the state or event transition testing. So today's session we will continue that because uh, the last session is important in terms of state transitioning and uh, the model uh, based design and uh, development and testing is based on the states, state machines, grammars and all that. So what we studied last time is the state transition technique. In which uh, uh, we studied about uh, composing the states, composing the transitions three, and uh, test script legal cases, test script uh, illegal test cases. Uh, it is something like a robustness. Illegal means it's illegal means it's not that uh, unethical or something like that. It is uh, beyond the normal test cases, uh, so called as illegal test cases, and the script cards, which is uh, optional. So other thing is uh, <clears throat> we took an example of a, a cassette recorder or a video cassette recorder which has about uh, five states standby, play, record, fast forward, rewind and uh, as far as the practicality is concerned we studied about uh, all the <clears throat> transitioning gods, conditions and the events that are going to happen between these and uh, accordingly we know that there are number of arrows for all of these, so we listed out a state event table which identifies about 18 types of state events and the dotted ones are cannot be achieved which are illegal but the system should not accept. So the tester should try to do this dotted ones as a robustness but the system should not accept as a state event, so that is why these are all dotted and it is called as illegal combinations and uh, <coughs> different events are standby uh, sorry different states are standby, rewind, play, fast forward and record. <coughs> also we had uh, drawn a tree which uh, talks about the path which is nothing but the control path, I will again rewrite so that uh, the very important term in the embedded system. control path, there is also something called as a data path which we do not need to control coupling data coupling, very important term uh, it is being used uh, in embedded system, so for now let us focus on control coupling or control path which is nothing but uh, the, the execution of the program taking or considering the different events that are happening within this uh, system events. So that is nothing but the, but the transition tree, so we have about uh, 14 test paths starting from standby and its substrate is uh, rewound, its substrate is play, fast forward, standby and standby like this play also have, so all these combinations so we have seen. Uh, uh, the different paths so that are uh, taken up uh, in the uh, state event uh, <coughs> transition tree so where we have uh, the primary event as a standby then we have rewind, play, fast forward, record etc. So all these paths have to be uh, tested, then we have drawn a table or a state chart table for the VCR having identified with identification legal 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 2.1, 2.2, 2 2.3 all these are basically event based, so there is a input and the condition the next one and the expected result, so this is how this needs to be done in terms of state transition testing, <laughs> so, uh, continuation of that, 
So we have a illegal test cases also. What we have seen is the dotted ones having uh, interfered uh, I1, I2, I3 till I16. So setup for this will be similar to the whatever legal ones we have, where we need L1.1 setup. That means rewind state is required and uh, rewind to uh, event rewind we need to move, uh, which is an illegal uh, script basically. <coughs> Similarly, all these are have been listed out. So there are practical issues which we have seen hierarchical uh, state charts. To draw it, it may be a little challenging. You need to have a practical knowledge as well as the system knowledge. Requirements, of course, will help as well. Then uh, coverage, the extensiveness, we need to have it. So state charts uh, are very important in doing this. Then detecting the fault, practicality and feasibility in achieving all this. So these are some of the practical issues in state transition testing. So that needs to be handled very meticulously. There is another term called mainstream usage testing, which talks about we should not stick stuck ourselves into boundary cases only. We should also see some of the good values as well in terms of a normal input as well as normal expected output. So typically that will be used when the system is running. That's how we do it. Okay. So model based testing and design we see today. Uh, I will go back to that slide which uh, we were uh, seeing it I think uh, yeah okay so before model based testing uh, the models have been uh, developed in the development phase with the help of a model based design and development uh, such as a MATLAB or Simulink there are of course uh, uh, different uh, tools also Verilog, VHDL etc. Uh, those are specifically for the hardware. For uh, complex uh, systems, we use uh, model-based development and testing. Basically, it uses uh, the different models for the system under the development or test. Those models are nothing but different diagrams, charts. So those will be done. Once we have those uh, models, and uh, those models uh, with the help of the tool can be used to generate the code. And that code can be deployed onto the target. Basically, that code can be generated in the host, and it can be deployed onto the target. And the target can be verified with the help of the target-based execution. But before that, we may have to do some tweaking. It is not 100% uh, uh, what is it called uh, directly usable with the help of auto code generated code. So that we need to. Uh, little uh, modify the auto generated code. Similarly, for verifying it, we use the same modeling concept for testing. That means basically, this model is a framework for us to go for the testing, which is nothing but the model based testing. We will study that later. Before that, I just want to uh, describe in brief uh, about model based design. So, philosophically, there are a lot of tools. Uh, Conceptualized, we have a UML unified modeling uh, language, uh, then we have a SysML system uh, modeling uh, language. So, these uh, are basically dealing with the all the use of. Uh, transition diagrams, state charts, all these type of uh, uh, what is that called? Uh, uh, representing the system in terms of uh, how it executes, how it is getting modeled. So that is how these are all very useful. Uh, once they do the models, they then generate the code, and uh, with the help of the target, they will add additional code in terms of wrapping the generated code into the target then they execute it same philosophy we use for testing also the same model concept is being used so that is how it is called as model based testing so let us see let us see about model based testing in the next slide okay 
So basically, model-based testing is the process of test generation from the models, as I explained in the previous slide, uh, for the system under test. There are number of methods that can be applied for MBT. MBT is nothing but model-based testing. The test cases are created automatically using models instead of manually. That means we have created the models and the tests are being generated automatically with the help of this model. Okay. Test cases are created automatically as I said. The same test cases with the help of test hooks we will generate the script and execute on the target board. The target board is already having the modeled code which is executing on the target. So basically three classes are getting identified model, test generation and test execution these are basically the classes they say about MBT model based testing. Okay, so definition let us see what is model based testing going by the Wikipedia although there are several definitions most of them most of them carry the same basic idea about an model describing a system and a system of some sort and some way of using that model to get the test cases or generate the test cases basically it is called as test sequences. Sequences or test cases are derived from the model. So, that is the fundamental about this. So, model based testing is a software testing in which test cases are derived in whole or in part it can be completely for a sub module model or a smallest of the model or as an entire model where we have a top down as I said in one of my earlier class or bottom up any of the approach where we consider the smallest of the units and go towards upper side something like an integration approach as a bottom up so we can use otherwise top down where we have the high level requirements definition is very clear and we have the models we can use the top down approach in terms of a holistic testing. So model based testing is software testing in which test cases are derived in whole or in part from a model that describes some usually functional aspects of the system on the test that means the model basically defines and describes the functional aspects so each model has its own functionality features inputs outputs what are the signals signals could be analog discrete whatever it is. So all this will be part of the uh, the functions which are basically used to describe the model. So, all these are useful in terms of developing the test that can be as a whole as well as at a unit. So, that is the definition of model based testing. Okay. Let us see some of the advantages of model based testing. As I said, in one of the things, it is very useful for complex systems. What are the other advantages that model based the testing has? Let us see. Model based testing is very easy to understand because uh, the model is visible, that means the user can uh, uh, see the pictorial representation as well as the, uh, the complete, complete representation of each of the sub modules that it comprises. So, basically, it is very easy for a tester, a developer or from the customer perspective. So basically complex systems will we can afford to have some time spending on developing the model in advance. So they they use this model based development in testing. So this is useful because it is easy to understand from all the perspective designer as well as the tester. 
primarily the de de developer and then the tester. Model based testing separates logic from the testing code that means we do not have to have a code uh, at the individual level uh, we can have a, a logic at the business level that means the functionality as a whole and the functionality as an individual level both can be separated separately and the code that we have which we want to test it that can be separated out. So, it will be very easier segregation of the different levels. So, easier segregation and integration. So, this is a basic thing that will help in terms of separating it. So, that is the advantage. Model based testing increases the test coverage with the same effort as classic test automation. So, classic test automation we do not have a model, so our model based testing we basically go by the requirements and the requirement pertaining to that we will try to understand the functionality and try to feed the signals and all that. So, where uh, the visibility is so, uh, much uh, uh, unclear that means especially complex systems. So, very useful uh, where we have a complex systems to have model based design in testing. So, in terms of classic test automation <coughs> the coverage is somewhat difficult. It is called coverage control that means you need to spend lot of effort in terms of having the coverage and understanding the coverage and reporting this, but whereas the model will basically help which models are done what are the signals covered. So, basically it's a concrete idea it gives for the coverage purpose okay, model based testing is the fastest way to get use of automated test that means somebody to have understanding and develop the automation it will be easier to have a model available for testing. So, that is the meaning of the last, last advantage ok. So, the other advantages are something like uh, though the models not have been uh, implemented completely uh, there are design and other things that would have been done already, but uh, without the need of uh, the implementation uh, somebody can start uh, the test cases or test scenarios definition that means uh, the earlier verification is very easy that means by seeing the models uh, we can find the test loss that means a tester can find some of the issues that the model has by visualizing it and going through the model itself having his own sort of test cases identified. So, that is the advantage. Then verification simulated using test based on high level requirements that means verification can be simulated we do not need to have a uh, target actually we can do offline as uh, it is told in the next one the test can be accomplished on the PC instead of the target we do not need to have a target based um, systems in the beginning we can have the verification done using simulation of the models uh, for the high level uh, requirements we can basically have a coverage from the high level requirements to the models that we have uh, under test. Model based testing enables us to switch testing tool if needed or support multiple platforms using the same model. That means, if the model supports the platform that is being deployed, same thing can be used for testing also, and uh, the tools that are used is very easy to switch. That means, the same models which are developed and deployed onto the target with the help of the tools can be used for testing also. So, that is the advantage of that. Okay. So, the next one is model based testing focuses on requirement coverage, not how many test cases you have visited last week, etcetera. That means 
you don't have to care uh, about the schedule and all that of course that's a different aspect but we go by model by model so and each model if you cover as you progress and focus on the model you automatically bind to cover the more requirements automatically so that's the advantage last one being uh, model based testing proved to positively affect the maintenance problem uh, nemesis of all test automation that means the maintenance of uh, the models as well as the model based testing is easier compared to uh, the requirement based testing of uh, not the model uh, what we have what we can say as uh, classic automation uh, testing <coughs> because uh, models uh, once it changes it's easier to uh, adapt the testing uh, changes as well so that is why model based testing uh, is easier to maintain compared to the classic uh, automation testing okay uh, we'll take an example this is again a reference from uh, one of the uh, good example from the <coughs> web actually a model describes how a system should be how we can understand uh, with an example below so we need to supply the action and see if the system responds as what you expect that means we have a states uh, defined as a blocks you can see there are the four blocks below right so we take this as an example where we have a uh notepad notepad as an example here uh, you can see we know all know that uh, uh, how we operate the notepad we have notepad executable opened we are going to start so there is a blank notepad that is going to open if you don't want you can close it so it, it, the operations that can happen in this model is that start and close the next what we are going to do once we have started the model is that uh, we're going to type something, and if you don't want to type that, we're going to delete it. It will be back to the blank uh, sheet. And once we are done, we are going to close it. Once we have typed it, we are going to close it. While closing, it will ask whether to <coughs> save it or not save it or cancel it. So cancel means it will be back to the same state what we which is having it. So that means the third state or the action will be done with the help of this uh, uh, transition and we do not want to save it will be back to uh, the notepad uh, execution mode where the notepad is closed. So a simplistic approach here we can see the model is described this way. So the model should work something like notepad as an executable should open should be able to type should be able to close and cancel and no operations should be there. So we know what are the actions that system the notepad system can respond as a model when we try to subject under test because this has already been developed. So that is a fundamental about model based test. Okay. So once we understood the, about the model based example with this notepad, we will try to understand what are the tasks of MBT model based testing. <coughs> so there are about uh, 6 steps or 6 tasks understanding the system choosing the model building the model generating the tests running the tests result collection and reporting the typical uh, system uh, testing uh, what we have seen in uh, the unit one classes. So similar things will apply here also, where we do the model based testing. First, we need to understand the system. Here, system means the models. So we need to understand the model first. Once we understood the model, we are going to start the test by choosing the right model. That means which you want to test, which you want to target first before we attack the sub models or sub models uh, in terms of the top down approach. 
so with all the selection criteria will be done with the help of choosing the model law this step once we have this we do the build build the model that means we develop the test model to what we want to do it once we have that model that is ready for testing we generate the tests that means all scripts for this model can be done or we will do a run through of this model with the help of various tools such as uml and all that then once we identify the tests we want to run it to see that how the model behaves once we are executed the tests or run the tests we have the result collection and reporting in terms of coverage and all that okay uh, understanding the system basically forming a representation of the system's functionality uh, that is a prerequisite of uh, building the model uh, this is a small task basically because uh, already we have the model and the complexity will be self explanatory in terms of understanding it. So basically the software whatever is being developed for that particular model will be deployed onto the target. So all this information will be part of that model by understanding the model we know that what the model does. So basically we determine the components features what are need to be tested that is the objective of the particular test test, uh, test. So while doing the understanding of the models so we also have to establish a sort of a communication called communication with the requirement. requirements design development team whatever it is that is very important because we need to establish the model mapped with the these aspects so it is very important along with that we are going to identify the users who are all there so how we can interact so we will also identify the inputs. inputs outputs how it can be driven all these aspects will be studied domain study is called that basically <coughs> there will be number of documents that we need to understand uh, to map what we have understood the model basically. So based on that we will uh, write the uh, tests that is why it is very important to have a understanding the system. Next we have choosing the model, so basically what we do is we select which model how we can test it that means this basically help in terms of grouping because there are number of models we need to understand what are the models which can be grouped so that that can be tested or attacked in terms of testing it. So that is why choosing the model is very important. So then we have the procedure for building the model. This is also very important step. So where we will basically build that means we put the constraints inputs outputs all this will be laid out in doing the building of the model and of course behavior behavior and behavioral constraints also important. So these are some of the building <coughs> building model building the model aspects that needs to be taken care for doing the model based testing. Next we are going to have the generating the tests, 
so something like we have a finite state machine for state diagrams so we need to traverse we have seen uh, how those paths can be done and what are the sequences so there are different uh, state state charts state diagrams sequence diagrams activity diagrams so many are there maybe uh, when we have a class for the uml we will study all of uh, this it is all aspects of uh, model based design and development those things needs to be done in terms of generating tests because having understood that uh, events and sequences we can have the tests where to trigger and all that then once we have that we are going to execute with the help of a script uh, which can help in terms of uh, executing those uh, tests providing the inputs running the conditions and providing the outputs also so those are uh, some of the uh, running the tests once we have uh, run the tests we need to evaluate it whether tests are correct so it is very important to understand how it has passed similar to fail why it has so very important points pass doesn't mean that it should be passed it could have been passed wrongly or it could have been uh, erroneously passed so how do we validate that so that is also very important so we need to evaluate our pass and fail criteria while doing the model based testing so those are the tasks that we have for the model based testing Uh, we will take a uh, one reference that I got from the web, <coughs> uh, examples of model based testing where and all they use. So, you can see there are the finite state machines, FSM it is called, which has a uh, different states. Uh, example here is uh, here is been given as a two states, uh, two events basically, uh, one is a door open, second one is a door close, uh, the first state is a uh, open the door second is the close the door so there is the action open door from closed state it will move to the open state similarly from the open state it will, it will go to the closed state with the help of closed door action so this arrow is a transition condition similarly we use the state charts which we have seen entry and there is a content the link so and what are the entry uh, state it has in terms of various actions. So, there is an author created, modified, etc. So, there are a lot of aspects that is involved in terms of uh, this is called a class diagram. Uh, this is done with the help of a UML, unified modeling language, is one of the uh, very popular. Uh, to represent the models or use the models. And uh, we have other uh, models, uh, model based software testing also, uh, that is called the Markov chains, grammars, which are a bit uh, uh, complex in terms of understanding of the model uh, testing. Uh, we need to uh, adopt any or one of these models and go in detail and deep uh, that will help in terms of model based testing. So, these are examples of uh, models that can be used. It can be FSM, state charts, UML, Marco chains, grammars, any of those. So, we will take, we'll take a simple model which you have uh, studied. Uh, we start with uh, how we can start with the test, a simplistic approach is that very simple is that you identify two states very simple like first one is the not running next one is the running. So, the model can be entered with a running state the model can be exited with not running state. So, we will start that way. So, that will help in terms of the understanding the complexity when we go in deep. So, not running and running start will go for running stop will go into not running state. So, these two are represented as a one model. So, we how we can do a test is with that we will apply a condition which is good for 
triggering not running to running so something like we will set the start as true or start as triggered that will enter into running so we will verify that whether the state has changed to running similarly the next test case will be whether it has run from whether it has changed from running to not running with the help of a stop command so two test cases we have identified similarly we will see the next level of complexity in the next slide you can see there are about four states <coughs> i think this is an example of a calculator yes so what we can do is so what are the different states that calculator can have we we take that as an example not running or a standard state it is called we have, we know that it will go to running with the help of a start and it will go back to not running with the help of a stop so two test cases can be there similarly for the second one running standard it can go further deep as another running state which is called scientific we know that calculator can operate will open a calculator i guess uh, you can see the calculator yes so we know that the calculator can run in the standard as well as non standard <coughs> way non standard could be a scientific which we can choose with the help of the file edit and select the scientific so that's how we can do it here from scientific it can go to not running scientific so likewise we can have a model based testing where we represent the model in terms of different states and how the how the model can be triggered into different states we can understand with the help of a standard example calculator going with more complexity we can see here not running running then there is a running standard empty running standard non empty scientific empty scientific non empty etc so each one has its own sort of a conditions all this can be executed with the help of the model based testing where we apply the different states into considerations here you can see uh, one set of uh, this is there other set of uh, state conditions are existing likewise we can have the complex model based testing where we have more states so here we have second one the next path it could take to 4 or it could get next go to 3 then then from 5 then it can go to 6 from 6 it can come back to 1 so likewise we can have you can see you can see to it again try to separate it out so it will be easier for you this is the original model this is a test model this is it's an exact replica replica of the the model so here we have the model here we have the mbt that is one path where we have tested so this is this is looking like same as the original model so we apply the model based testing philosophy to apply all this uh, <coughs> test scenarios into the model where the model is represented in the help of at the left hand side uh, different blocks so that is the concept of model based testing 
So I'll repeat again. All these model blocks can be tested with the help of different events, where the events can be from not running to running, running to scientific, scientific to scientific empty, scientific non empty, and etc. So all these five blocks in this complex example we can have, and each can go into different path with the help of a model based testing approach, so which is represented with uh, with the help of a model based testing model another model which is another uh, replica of the original model you can see on the right hand side so that can be called as a model based testing I'll delete it so that I come back to the original <coughs> model okay Okay, so there are three aspects that we have tested application status, mode status, display status, so which can be many things actually. Uh, going by the example, we can see the application is running or not running uh, because that is the primary states which made which was made with the help of a running uh, state from the standby state. In that way, we know what is the status of the application. Similarly, we have a mode that also can be tested. So, what are the modes that can be triggered to enter into different status? We can choose standard method or a scientific method. So, these are primary inputs for testing the mode status. So, test cases are written in such a way. Then we have a display status. The display can have a A, B, C, or in terms of hexadecimal. In terms of numerical, you can show 0 to 1, 2, 3, 9, whatever the number, and it also can show plus minus the logical operations and or whatever it is. So, primarily, the calculator example has three more three types of statuses against which that calculator model will be tested. So, application status, more status, display status. Application status has running and not running, more status has a standard scientific. And display status has empty and non empty. So, right hand side you can see uh, the various uh, steps that are involved the start, scientific, stop, start, standard, stop, clear, stop, start, scientific, clear. So, these are some of the executions that can be done uh, like a test scenario. So there are about 14 test scenarios that have been listed on the right hand side all this can be applied to test one of these three aspects or three features of the function. So calculator may be having a requirement something like the calculator should calculator application should enter into a running status calculator should be able to do not running states should be able to enter into so this one requirement. Requirement one, requirement two. So instead of writing, a calculator should go into running, not all. So it's very easy to have a model. What we have seen in the previous example, so with the help of that model, uh, we start with a simplistic approach, then a little more complex, then the full complex so approach, considering the model uh, as a whole. So that is how model-based testing is carried out. Okay, on the right hand side you can see the different scenarios have been listed out. Okay. Uh, the various uh, what is that called taxonomy of model based testing this will cover basically all aspects of model based testing this is the what is that called a complete model based testing overview this is again described in detail in model based testing of real time model systems in the automotive domain by Justina Zander. Novika, there is a book called uh, 
model based testing for an automotive model. so that has a more depth clear description about uh, model based testing where he has uh, basically uh, have a categorization in terms of classes and uh, categories and options you can see the first column have the classes model test generation test execution test evaluation so these are some of the classes that are used for model based testing then we have categories model itself is a category where we draw the model next one is a test generation where we have a test selection criteria we know that the test selection criteria can be based on the black box approach having the events or the the various dynamic testing that we have seen in our earlier classes <coughs> and that test selection criteria can be applied with the help of this options column that test selection can be structural model coverage data coverage requirements coverage test case specification random and stochastic fault based so all this are type of options that can be used for test selections so with the help of that we are going to have a test generation for this model for this class test generation is under class then we have the technology what sort of a technology we are going to adopt for this test selection criteria as i said in my earlier slides it could be automatic or manual a black box or white box then random generation graph search algorithms model checking symbolic execution theorem proving or algorithm proving online or offline there are number of things number of options that can be used in terms of the tools or technology next we have identified this test generation as a class we go for execution class how we are going to execute so execution options are model in loop software in loop hardware in loop etc so it could be reactive as well as non reactive so we are going to observe in terms of non reactive mode in terms of reactive we are going to inject it so that is a one class the next class of the model based testing is test evaluation test evaluation has basically specification in technology the specification will refer in mapping the tests that we have done with the above test execution after we have the test generation as another class so what it helps is we refer all the features functionalities that have been tested or test executed and all the signals whether they be covered robustness normal boundary Uh, etc all this test selection criteria and the execution option will be specified and also that specification will have a coverage in terms of how many requirements are covered so what are the evaluations that i have done for this coverage all this will be part of the test evaluation class similarly technology also we are going to evaluate that means for example i am going to qualify tool also Uh, example if take uh, automotive or aerospace because we need to uh, subjectively understand whether the tool is producing the right results the intended result that should not have any any errors the tool should be error free all this will be part of this technology evaluation or a tool evaluation it could be automatic or manual it could be online or offline with the help of uh, uh, the vendor uh, whoever has uh, produced the technology or the tool output so that is about uh, the model based testing classes categories and options which are used in the industry okay so that is uh, the end of this session we have discussed described about models and the tasks of the models model based software testing example taking a calculator what are the different states it will enter and when we have the complexity we define the paths that models can take and we replicate that using a model separately as i explained so that is the philosophy of model based testing and we list out the features versus its test scenarios uh, categorized in the model based testing and uh, 
we can have a classes defined for model based testing in terms of a model the model where the model is a category and uh, test generation test execution test evaluation or the other classes with the help of all this the model based testing is carried out <coughs> coming to the ml system words that we have gone through ml system testing words so far in all the units test harness test bed test bench automated test equipments model based testing which we have studied today and the previous class test tubs test drivers we can probably study in detail in the next classes fault injections mcdc test hooks boot software boot follow interface control document breakpoint simulators emulators trace profilers or profile data sheet data in circuit emulator test equipment code checker static analysis i think static analysis code checking in all be part of the next future sessions and in terms of ml system jargons we need to ml system testing jargons we need to understand the unit analysis x disassembly reverse engineering life cycle baseline pre model all we have studied i will not go one by one the software software integration test hardware software integration test iv and v robustness normal nominal average states transitioning likewise okay some more uh, glossary we studied today equivalence class we have studied in separate class a portion of the components input or output domains for which the components behavior is assumed to be the same from the component specification error a human action that produces an incorrect result evaluation the reviewing and inspecting of the various uh, intermediate products and the process of the system under test or development <coughs> expected result we know that it is a behavioral prediction of the specification for a particular input under specific conditions failure a deviation from the system from expected behavior or service fault a manifestation of an error in the software a fault if encountered may cause a fail is the result of an error basically functional requirement required functionality for the behavior of the system functional specification is a document basically that describes the uh, characteristics of the product with regard to with regard to its intended capability high level testing we know as a complete product we are going to test it with the help of high level requirements or specification hardware in loop where we put the test with the actual target or the real hardware is used in terms of the testing and initial situation is one condition the state which a system must be in the start of the test case that means a pre condition is also called as it's very important term. this is usually described in terms of the values of relevant input data and internal variables okay so that is the end of the this session of the embed system testing unit so in the next session we will study about the next methods and all that